Greetings friends! Things are busy here once again on the homestead and as you can probably hear the sound behind me we have some guys here who are working on cutting down some trees for us once again. They've been busy here for the past few days working on cutting down trees along the power lines for us. Uh, we don't live off grid, we still use electricity from the city. So they, the city has brought guys in to clean up the trees around those power lines so there won't be any trees or branches that fall on those lines and uh, hinder us from having electricity. And as they're cutting down those trees, they've also been mulching them, chipping them up, and providing us with free mulch. So I'm loving that. And while they're working over there, we're working over here trying to set up this new fence that we got for our goats. It's a 60 inch netting, electrified netting from Premier One, and uh, it's really tall, really neat. I'm not the super tall guy or anything. I'm actually, some may consider me to be vertically challenged, but you can see it goes all up over my head. So hopefully we can use this instead of what we've been using. We've been using a double layer here for our goats and it's been working fine. We were just having a single layer, they were jumping it. So ever since we've added this double layer of fencing, it's been working great. But we wanna see, I wanna see if I can go down to just one fence. So we're gonna see if this will work. So the reason I'm setting the fence up like this is we have this area right here that I really want them to go to town on. I plan to have this, hopefully this will work out, and I want this to be a semi-permanent fence that we'll have up here in this area, and we'll keep them in for the most, most of the time, but we'll gradually set up a, rotationally, a rotational grazing program. That way they can just, we can just start them here and they can just gradually move on down to different areas that we're working on creating. So we got our first roll set up, so let's go ahead and set up this next one. And I'm hoping that it will go the distance that we need it to go to. But you can see all this goodness in here for them to eat. I really want them to munch it down. However, one of the challenges that we have over here is it's gravel in here. So this ground is hard and we're gonna be dealing with gravel. So we're gonna have to be using the set Samer Dare Josai to uh, push these bikes in. I really like the double spikes, but right now I'm not putting them all the way in the ground because one of the things that I've learned from using this netting is sometimes you have to make adjustments. So why put it all the way in the ground when you have to pull it out? That can be tough sometimes, especially in an area like this. So we're just coming through and then just put it about halfway in. Alrighty, so it looks like I'm running out of fence here. I wanted to be able to kind of go around and then connect it, but it looks like we're gonna to have to go.
All right. Will it reach? A little short. Let's see here. Just a little short. Give it a little more slack to side. Pull that one corner out. We should reach. So I'm gonna put it in all the way. Make a little adjustment. So I think we'll reach. Lift that out of the ground, Micah. And we made it. Right there. Bang. There we go. All right, guys. Now we can go along and tighten all these up. One thing I want to point out right here, just high when you're trying to pull it tight, you grab the top as well as you kick it at the bottom. So that way you get it tight and then you push it in. So you do that on that next piece. All right. Push it this way or that You got up here, now you push it with your foot. Yep, push it. Yep. There you go, good job. All right, fellas. Look at there. Bam. Ghost are like, what is happening over here? All righty. All right, let's see if we can get the goats in this area now. Meh. Hey. Meh. Hey. Hey. All righty. Actually, since this one's so tall, it's not so easy to go right over. So we'll just go in over here. All right, come on in. Come on in through there. Stay right there, Micah. All right, so we'll undo our first fence here. Then open it up for them. And we'll undo the other. All right, Kasai, so we're going to make sure we're going to kind of guide them that way. All right. Yeah. Hi. Let's see if we can encourage him to come on over. Man. 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 Come here, Libby. Yes, man. All right, so a little nervous. I don't blame him, especially if you've been shocked by this fence before. So just side, let's regroup. Let's go ahead and get him some bucket of feed to encourage him to go where we want him to go. Can you do that for me? So some of the things that the goats really enjoy is alfalfa and sunflower seeds. So Josiah's going to try to get some of that to see if we can bait them to come over where we want them to go eat up there where the grass is greener <laughs> in the little promised land area over there. Yeah, you a little nervous? You a little nervous? Huh? Huh? You looking kind of plump there, girl. Got the bucket? Yep. All right. Hand it to me. All right. Here we go. Come on, guys. Girl. Come on. Follow me. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Over here. Now they know they can come over here though. It's okay. Ran back over there. Got another one? Yep. Alright, here we go. I don't know if it's all the loud noise over there steering them, but the others want to stay in there. But Bucky and Libby, they're moving around and exploring and getting in here and eating some grass. So we'll leave them alone for a little bit and then we'll come back and check on them, see if uh, any more of them get out here and start eating some of this down.
So a number of days have passed since we set up this fence for our goats. And during that time, the tree guys have still been going to town with cutting down trees. And I think they said they cut down about 80 to 100 trees so far. And they have been giving us so much mulch. We'll be good with mulch for a while. Uh, but we really need it because we're going to be using it in various different ways. So all those trees that cut down, they're not going to waste. We're going to be reusing them in various ways around here in the homestead. But in that area where they cut down all the trees around the power lines, it looks so much cleaner. So there should be way less likelihood of branches and trees falling on our power lines during the colder winter months or during storms so we're really grateful of that but the goats since we set up this fence at first only our male goat bucky and libby were wanting to come over here and eat but since then all the other goats have joined in and they're really just going to town eating various things in here and i grew all this up specifically for them thinking that at some point in this year i was going to bring them in and now's the time and they are going to town so we got olga and helga over here they're really going to town eating right there as you can see and we have bucky right here and hazel she's in there enjoying as well and then libby right here which is our most adventurous goat she uh she was one of the first to really get in here and start going to town also, I was recently away at the Homesteaders of America conference and I got this shirt there, which I really like. I got it from the Redmond Salt Company. Give more than you take. And I really like that phrase because it really encapsulates some of the things that philosophies that I really have been trying to think about and instill here on our homestead. It's not about giving the minimum to animals, to others, to our families. And then taking the maximum is no i want i want every life everything here on our homestead and in in my life those around me to have an abundant life to have the best life possible i want my goats to have the best life while they're here and in return we do get things like they help us out with clearing up things around the homestead clearing the property working with it and tending it and managing it and then, then they also can provide us with meal and then at some point provide us with meat but during that time the whole time that they're here i want for them to have the best life possible and that's the same for our chickens our ducks and everything i want to be able to give whatever i can give to them so they have a good life too and then we receive from that as well like a, it's just like a synergistic relationship that all benefit but trying to make sure that i'm not just giving the least amount possible to where they're just trying to and i'm just trying to take everything that i can from them and they just live a terrible life so no so there's been a nut that is related to a, just a number of different things that i have learned since i've been a homesteader and raising animals there's a lot of lessons involved with raising animals i didn't grow up raising animals uh, in fact, I was a pr pretty much like a, a city boy, a suburban city boy, or uh, I had a dog. I did, I did have a dog growing up, but I, I didn't have a chance to really work with the land, work with growing things, work with livestock. And there's so many lessons to learn with that. And I just think back of some of the pictures of, of me back in that time where <laughs> I, I like to dress nice at that time. And now I still do, but most of the time living out here, you're just constantly <laughs> you're getting dirty, doing various projects and doing various things. So staying clean is, is really, really hard to do here. Uh, hard to do in, with, in this lifestyle. But it just kind of thinking about how far I've come from where I was before to what we're doing now, it kind of makes me think about to uh, in the Bible think about Moses and how he was in, in Egypt and he was living he was living a prince life and then God sent him to go be a shepherd and there's so many lessons that humbling lessons to learn from making those kind of transitions but they're really beneficial lessons to learn about just just about life and even the things that I learned with raising animals helps me in helping dealing with people and, and to be more patient because raising animals at times um, uh, you do have to be firm, but you also need to be a good shepherd, a shepherd that the animals want to come to. You're not abusing the animals. You, When they see you, they, they should want to run to you thinking, hey, he's bringing goodness. He's coming to give. So uh, those are just, just things to think about as you raise animals.
and thinking more on giving more than you take as well as what I'm trying to do here on our homestead and trying to provide and make sure that I give each thing here the best life possible. It's really a, a, a concept that I didn't come up with. Redmond didn't come up with it. It really is a, a biblically based principle. Now the Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. There really is a deep sense of satisfaction that comes when I see the different animals on my homestead living a good life. Seeing the media over there is just beautiful. And then to see things like your, your children having a, a good, an abundant life. That's, that's special. That's nothing that I'm receiving necessarily from that, but it's me giving something and seeing them enjoy it. That's, that's special. Right down here at the bottom of our garden, where we're growing some arugula, some turnips, and some beets. But even further beyond that, you see that smoke coming up right there. Well, I've had a fire going for like four to five days straight now. And the reason why is we've been clearing up along this fence line, clearing out all the different vines and trees that had grown up into the fence just because it's been there for a number of years now. Actually, it, all that area was wooded up to about a year ago when I started clearing it out, clearing it up for our ducks here. So I'm gonna continue working on that because I want to provide them, give them with a better area for them to be happier in. So we're gonna mulch all this for them and uh, may even plant some shrubs that we can keep here uh, just for them for some shade and we're gonna be working on some, some other things. But speaking of that, it's time to let the ducks out. Hey, Sayla. Hi. You're just in time. It's time to let the ducks out, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> you know what? I'm getting kind of rusty with letting ducks out since you've been doing it for so long now. I'm the original duck man. <laughs> yeah, I'm the duck girl. <laughs> <laughs> so let me, let me do it this time if you don't mind. Sure, you can do it this time. Thanks for giving me an opportunity to do it again. <laughs> Fence off. Quack, 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 quack. Quack, 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 quack. You think they're ready? I think so too. And with that, we give them access to the park. It's beautiful to watch them in the water every time. Well, before you go, I do want to mention that I have a discount code for you guys for both Redmond Salt as well as Redmond Agriculture. And I'll leave that in the show notes below. Also, if you're interested in getting the netting like we have up there for the goats, I have that information in the show notes below too. But it's so nice to see that we can give them access to the pond. They just love it. <laughs>